Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Chapter 12, verse number one, a very familiar passage of record. I don't want to bore you, but I'll read it from the King James Version. And it says these following of words. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, that means sisters too, you know, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Certainly with your prayers and the aid of the Holy Spirit, after I give my text worship team, if you desire, you may go and sit with your family. I want to talk today uh, in the subject, because we're still dealing with our theme for this year, conforming to his image. It's our DNA divine nature accelerated so today i'm going to tag this text today right relationships mean right living right relationships means right living you may be seated in the presence of god and uh for certain beloved of God, I am truly amazed. And I say that because as I was sharing with our team earlier today in one of our victorious living classes, one of the things that I am so blown away by is that the text helps me to understand that if I'm going to live for God, then there has to be a change in me. Have I got a witness? And many of us, my brothers and sisters, we expect others to change, but we don't want to change ourselves. It's an oxymoron to me, and so while I was in my time of meditation, I thought about, the problem with this world today, Brother Gerald, is nobody wants to be committed. I, I believe that we're living in a time now where people have what I would call a commitment phobia. We, 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 you know, we, 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 we want to uh, get as much as we can, watch this, while we can. But we don't believe in giving nothing back. Okay, you're going to sit there like I ain't preaching to you, so that's okay. I came to work today. You, you, you want to keep taking. And some folks don't believe in reciprocity. Have I got a witness? You, you want us to do for you, but you don't want to do Help me, Hines. It, 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 we're living in a time where folks don't want to be committed no more. You want promotion, but you don't want to be committed. I want to be at church, but I don't want to be in church. I just want to come and hear a sermon and go on home. I don't want to be committed to no ministry. Don't want to be committed to no, no, no auxiliary. I don't want to be committed to nothing. I just want to come, hear the word, and go home. That's a bamboozlement of the enemy. 
Oh, they ain't talking to me now, sister. See, see, that's why you go to them big old churches, you know, you know, so you can hide. You don't, you, you know, these little small churches, we know who you are. We get on the phone. Hey, hey, kind brother, we didn't see you today, brother Cook. How you doing, man? We miss you. See, see, I, 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 y'all ain't talking to me. And some folk, they want to run from us calling. But you can't run from God. Have I got a witness? You know, uh, you know, uh, commitment isn't everything we do. You ought to teach these youngins this. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about, you know, you, you millennials and you Z generations. You know, we, we were taught you don't ever start something that you can't finish. I wish I had some help here, Faith. You know, you don't, you don't say you want to be a part of a track team. And then when it's time to get up and go run, I don't feel like getting up. No, you said you won't be a part of it. You're going to stick it out until the end of the season. They ain't saying that now, kind brother. See, you got, we were taught commitment. Nowadays, we run from it. I'm trying to make it plain, daughter, but they ain't saying that. You, 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 you got to stay committed. And, and watch out for those folks who have a tendency to sit back and judge those who are committed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay, okay, I hear you. What does that look like? Okay, okay, faith, since I called your name, let me just run on you a little bit today. So therefore, sometimes commitment says after practice, you may stay an extra 30 to 45 minutes after practice. Not to hang out with your friends, but to, watch this, fine-tune your craft. To make you stronger, to make you faster, to make you, watch this, set you above the average. Some folks are just comfortable at status quo. And so you got to watch them people, daughter, because status quo people, they have a tendency to judge those of us who excel a little further. And you got to be careful because some folks try to keep up with you when God ain't never told them that they can have what you got. Oh, I'm going somewhere now. So, 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 so it is, beloved of God. I, I've come to understand that uh, right relationship means right living. So if I'm going to conform to the image of God, if it's going to be my DNA, I have to be very selective in who I hook up with. I know y'all ain't saying nothing now. Because sometimes even your family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I know they may be sitting next to you right now and you can't say nothing. Just look at me. Yep, yep. They could be your worst enemy because you're trying to move out and up. And if they ain't got the revelation, they're going to talk about you now. Oh, yeah, they are. I, I know what I'm talking about. Yes, indeed. As long as I was still in Compton, I was the boy. I was the man. But as soon as I said I'm moving out, all of a sudden, oh, he didn't turn his back on us. No, I just want to be like Wheezy, you know, and them. I want to move on up to the east side. I, I want a little piece of that pie, too. These millennials looking at me like, what are you talking about? It was called the Jeffersons. Yeah, it's called the Jeffersons. And so, and so what happens is I come to understand in relationships now, you're only going, either going to be faithful or you're going to be unfaithful. You're either going to be loyal or you're going to be disloyal. You're either going to be committed or you're going to be uncommitted. It's, it's just that simple. And, and I need to tell you today that if you're going to live a life that will be pleasing to God, you have to find right relationships. 
because as I, as I, as I, as I examine myself, I realize now, and now that I'm 53, I realize that my father and mother, as I was a child, tried to protect me from bad negative influences and what they would tell us is that a uh, young man uh, is something about that boy uh, see y'all y'all may not have these conversations anymore yeah it's something about him now uh, now i'm not saying that uh you can't you know uh, uh be kind to him but but what i'm saying is something about him that i just don't like I don't know his mom and daddy. It's just something about it. And I want you to be very careful when you hang around them because what happens is I know what I put in you. Lord, I wish I had a church here. But, 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 but what I put in you is about to be tested when I'm not around you. And if you're not careful, if I didn't put it good enough and deep enough in you, the boy that you're hanging around may have more influence over you after I've been with you the last 15 years. And if you only been with them for six months and they can come up and tell you something and you ignore what I put in you for 15 years to do what they want you to do and you just met them a few hours ago, that's a problem. I wish I had a real church here. That's a problem. Relationships bothers me. I got two. Yeah, my children. I used to tell them all the time, you better be careful who you hang around. Oh, yes, I did. I, I would tell them that. I would tell them that faith. I would tell them that Kyrie. Why? Because association brings on assimilation. You know, if it looked like a duck, Walk like a duck, quack like a duck. Can I help you? It must be a duck. Ah, 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 ah. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Jamet. So when we see things, because parents, it is your job never to retire from being a parent. Uh oh. Oh, kind brother, they ain't saying nothing right now. Oh, did you hear what I said? Overseer would say it this way. When they were infants, they was on your lap. But when they got grown, now they're in your heart. It doesn't matter how old they get. Mine is 27 or 28 and 30. And I don't care what nobody said. If I see them doing wrong, it's my job as their father to correct them. At a 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old self. I don't care about you getting tired. I don't care about you telling me I don't live in your house. I don't care about you telling me I wish you mind your own business. You are my business. And if you're going to hell, it's my job to warn you. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I can tell maybe some of you parents need to have this kind of conversation with your children because they looking at me like all cross-eyed and funny looking because, you know, maybe they ain't used to me talking like this here to them. But you need to get them kids and set them down and help them to understand as long as you're breathing, I will instruct you in a righteous way of living. And most importantly, not only will I instruct you in it, watch this now, I'm going to live it in front of you. That, that's the part you grown-ups ain't saying too much on. As long as I was talking to these kids, y'all was all up on me then. And then when I got down to the part where walk this thing out and live holy before them, you got quiet on me. I, you, 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 you kept your hand clap on. You act like you got a withered hand on me right there. So I need to tell you, in the perusing of this text, in all of the apostles' letters, Paul concluded, Elder, with what I call a list of practical duties that were based on the doctrine he had discussed. Notice in the Christian life, as I, as I walk through this here, in the Christian life, 
doctrine and duty always go together. Doctrine and duty always go together. It brings a lifestyle of discipline. Have I got a witness? It causes you to be committed to that which you believe. What we believe, Elder Drew, helps me to determine how I should behave. I'll say that again. What we believe determines how I should behave. So if you don't believe that the Bible is your substrata, in other words, your final authority, then I will expect you to live any kind of lifestyle. But if you believe that the Bible is your final answer, then you can't live any kind of lifestyle. Talk to me, church. The Bible says that committing fornication and adultery, y'all y'all got quiet then, is, is not not right and it's a sin before God but the world law sister don't say that committing adultery and fornication is a defilement of anything you can live how you want to live you can say what you want to say act like you want to act and you good that's why he told y'all you can be in the world but not be of the world The world is going to hell in a handbasket. That's why they're doing whatever they want to do. And the church is silent. Because we don't want to offend nobody. I, I can't say nothing about this group. Because they they're going to take offense to it. You know, I, I grew up old school. It, it amazes me, though. It amazes me. I, I, I got to press my, my I got to get out of here. I know I do. But, but it amazes me how we can call an alcoholic an alcoholic. We call him a drunkard. You understand? You, you, you can call a liar a liar. Anybody mad? But as soon as you start correcting somebody's lifestyle, I'm a protest against you. Do all the protesting you want. Homosexuality is not of God. Lesbianism is not of God. Adultery is not of God. Fornication is not of God. Being a drunkard and a liar and a murderer and a cheater and all of that is not of God. You ain't got to say amen. It's in the Bible. So you check your relationship. You know how it was when you got saved. Yeah. Heinz, when you got saved, everybody was happy for you. For the first few days. Until they realize that you're not being the supplier of the fun. Then all of a sudden, attitudes. After I got saved, I wasn't no big, you know, you know, I wasn't no big drinker because I can't handle all that stuff. The worst I went was a California cooler. How come about y'all laughing at me? Y'all the one got the problem. I don't. And uh, kind brother, I, I drank my little California cooler. You know what I'm saying? I was good. I didn't like how that other stuff, you know, that, that stuff y'all be drinking, that Thunderbird and Night Train and Old English 800, all that stuff make y'all act stupid and crazy. I know, I hear what y'all saying. That's that cheap liquor. It was the liquor y'all was drinking because you were broke. You couldn't afford nothing else. And now you got a little money. You want to tap it up to Cavazier, gin and juice and all of that. But you remember when you didn't have, you were drinking that old raggedy Kool-Aid. Say amen, 
nothing to this. Sabbath ain't saying nothing to me. Help me preach this here. But as soon as I wanted to change, Kai, the first thing they did was try to tempt me. Want some of this? And then what they did was they See y'all, I thought I had a real chest. And because they, the smell of the aroma make your mouth water. Bring up the old desires. And it even had you contemplating. Help me, Kevin. What should I do? And the truth of the matter is, I got to be honest with y'all today. They ain't closed the liquor store because you've been saved. They ain't closed the strip club because you've been saved. The dope man is still making a crazy amount of money right now. Why are you in church? Somebody on the corner still buying and still selling. So it ain't going nowhere. You just got to deal with the relationship that you have a relationship with God. Say amen to this. And so, so now, Elder Satina, it is not enough for us just to understand Paul's doctrine and explanations. What we must now do, beloved of God, is translate our learning, watch this, into the right living. And watch this, and then, and then when we transform it into our right living, now what happened is we can say, uh, Lord, let your will be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on earth as it is in heaven. And, 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 and as we're getting ourselves in alignment with the word of God, you must understand that the key, watch this now, to this section of the Bible, it's really dealing with relationships. There was a term called relational theology. It is a relatively new term, but the idea is not new. If we have a right relationship to God, then we have a right relationship to the people, watch this, who we are, who are part of our lives. You just missed it. Because you can't say you saved, cook, but you acting like the world. Lord, help me here. Oh, that's why folks don't come to church now. Because we call them hypocrites. And some folks was, I ain't going up in that church knowing I ain't living right. Nowadays, we have no fear. We have no reverence, Brother Gerald. And so we think we can do whatever we want to do and call it right. And as long as I come to church. You ought to just thank God I'm here. Let me help you. You may not never hear a preacher tell you this. You ain't doing me no favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Did you hear what I just said? That's why I don't beg folk to come to this church. Because if I beg you to come, I got to beg you to stay. And I'm not in the relationship of begging nobody to be somewhere they don't want to be. You missed what I just said. It's like a relationship. If you don't want to be in a relationship with me, then hey, I'm not staying because I got to stay. I'm staying because we're cordial. We're respected. We, we love each other. And that's the kind of way it ought to be with God. I'll serve you because I love you. I'll worship you because I love you. I praise you because I love you. And, and if I don't love you, then why am I connected to something that I don't love? Do you hear what I say? Notice. God would put people in our paths to bring them into the knowledge of who he is. You must be careful when you say words like, I hate you. Mm, you ain't saying that now. Be careful when you say 
stuff like that because God ain't pleased with you telling somebody I hate you you ain't fat holy that you woke up and got out the bed and came out your mother's womb sinless we are all born in sin y'all ain't talking to me here but notice what 1 John 4 verse 20 say. I'm not just preaching myself. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the word of God. 1 John 4.20. Tell the jumbo trumps if you don't want to go there. The Bible says, watch what it says in King James. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, You know what I mean? The Bible called him a liar. Say amen to that. So y'all get quiet because somebody called you a liar. You know you're a liar. And only you getting, getting upset because somebody called you a liar. You a liar, you a liar. You know it where it come out your mouth is a lie. You know who you are. You got to tell a dope head he's a dope head. He know he a dope head. I tell no alcoholic you're an alcoholic. I smell like alcohol. My eyes are red. It's coming out my pores. I know who I am. You got to tell no whoremonger you're a whoremonger. You know every time you look at somebody you lusted. <laughs> to your own self you got to be true. If any man say I love God and hated his brother. I'm back in the text. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he seeth or have seen how can he love God whom he have not seen in other words he's trying to say how can you say you love me and you have never seen me but I hate you strong words have I got a witness? Point number one in this, in this series of this sermon about right relationships means right living. Point number one is this. Watch this. You ready? You have to give God your body. I know. I got it. That's a little hard for some of you. It's a little hard for some of you. Because you're you so used to doing what you want to do. I know I'm telling the truth. Because it get quiet. Your, your silence is golden to me. That means I'm on a bunion or a coin. And while I didn't hit it, I might as well step on it a little harder, cook. To make you holler and say, Lord, forgive me. Notice in verse 1 of our text, Romans 12, 1, notice what it says. And put me in the NLT version to make it plainer for the simplicity of the gospel's sake for those who are not King James readers. Romans 12 and 1 in the NLT says it this way. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I ain't leaving nobody out. I plead with you. To give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly Oh, that, that, that messed me up there, kind brother. Because now he's telling me we think worship is, who he can mashah. Hey, dancing, all oh, that's part of it. But real worship, Kai, is denying my flesh. Telling my flesh, get in line with the word of God. That's why I told you point number one, Brother Jillis, you got to give your body. You got to give it up. And before, before we trust Christ, we use our bodies 
for all kind of sinful pleasures. I know y'all ain't going to say amen because, you know, you, you, you fixed up now. And, and, and you done some stuff that you ain't proud of. You, you, you acted some kind of way. You, you know you ought not have been acting. Come on, help me here, cook. But now that we belong to Jesus, he wants to use your body for his glory. I got, I got about 10 folk clapping. What happened to the, the other 90 of y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to give up the control of you and put you in the control of God. Lord, I'm trying to preach it here. And so it is. I hear you. I hear you. Well, oh, brother preacher, well, why, why God do all that? Because the Christian body is the temple of God. Okay, all right. You 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 ain't you ain't gonna follow me. I'm gonna take you to the book then, cause that's how I kill demons and devils. Go to First Corinthians chapter number six. You gonna make me preach, or so I'm gonna preach. Yes, indeed. I'm gonna walk this word here till I kill that demon. First Corinthians chapter six. Here it is. I'm 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 I'm, I'm oh God help me. Go to verse eighteen. Look what it say. First Corinthians. 6 and 18. There it is. Look what it says. Uh-huh. 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 You ready? King James said flee fornication. Don't go to it. It said flee fornication. Uh-huh. But, 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 but you NLT readers, this is what it's saying. Because y'all, y'all, don't, y'all, y'all don't want to hear what King James says. That's too, that's too deep for some of y'all. So, 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 so let me break it down for you to help you understand. This is what he really meant in verse 18 in the New Living Translation. Run! Y'all see, y'all, y'all, y'all too deep for me. Run from sexual sin. Jamed, I wish somebody would hear what I just said through the Holy Ghost. Many of us, when you're in the world, we run to sin. But now that I'm born again, I'm supposed to run from sin. Why? Because I'm in a different relationship. The relationship I'm in now, son, is with Jesus Christ. And he says, while you're in relationship with me, Jesus, I need you to run. He says, watch this, watch this. Run, deacon, from sexual sins. Ooh, watch this. Watch, 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 watch. watch this. You ready? No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body Lord I thought I had some real creeper here Uh uh-huh yeah I know you're saved now you understand Uh, but you're still dealing with the recompense uh, of the choice that you made uh, before you got saved Uh, and some of you are still running to sin uh, and you still got to deal with the recompense of your choice okay don't 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 shut me down now since you ain't saying amen let me go on and talk to verse 19 notice what it says don't you realize that your body, uh oh, here we go again, Elder. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You don't belong. Boy, I wish. I, I, if I had a sword, right, I want to throw this mic and hit somebody upside the head. I feel that good right now. Because some of y'all sitting here, Gabe, act like you ain't heard nothing I just said. I, I know, I know. It get tight like that sometimes. The truth does hurt. The truth does liberate. But the Bible is self-explanatory. It don't need no crutch. It's sanitary. And some of y'all get a little uncomfortable. I got that too. I got that too. I got that too. But you, you don't belong. yourself see Heinz that's that's what they messing up right there 
Well, why is that? I can do whatever I want to do. No, 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 no. Go, go, go to verse 20. Don't, 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 don't turn me off yet. That's why I like putting it on the jumble trunk. Because sometimes you don't want to read it. So I got to help you read it. For God bought you. Somebody say he bought me. And he bought me with a high price. Lord, so now, daughter, I think I need to ask y'all, do you know your value? Okay, because, you know, you know, you know, Dr. Sean has several uh, uh, expensive bags, you know, Louis Vuittons and all of that kind of stuff. And, and what I've learned when we went to uh, Paris and uh, we went to uh, the Louis Vuitton store there, they didn't have a discount section. No, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, now, now I ain't messing with nobody now. If you let me be careful because some of y'all, you know, you, you may get offended because I'm talking about your little bag. If it ain't, you know, I'm not talking about your, 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 your bootlegs. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the pleather. I'm talking about the real stuff because some of y'all, because some of y'all don't know no better. You, you think that because you, you got it from the swap me, you think you go up into the, the Louis Vuitton store in Paris, you know, talking about, let me get a discount and they look at you like you're crazy. Ain't nobody give you no discounts around here. Either you want it. Either you pay the price for it. Uh, you don't want it. The bag costs this amount. You cost a certain amount. And Jesus paid the price for you. And that's why I don't think you know your value. Gabe, I don't think they know their worth. Because if you knew your value and your worth, you'll be up on your feet giving God some praise because you'll tell the devil that little cheap trick you tried. Oh, it didn't work, homie. You better try that on somebody that don't know their value and their I ain't no discount. I don't have no sale price tags and special discount on me. It's a high price. He paid a high price for me. I want somebody to look at the back of you and tell somebody, take that old stick up off me. I, uh, I'm worth more than this. Uh, the devil is a liar. Your little, your little thing you tried, it ain't working now. Uh, I'm more than this. I'm more than a cheap roll in the hay. I'm more than just a little dinner out on at McDonald's and Jack in the Box. You don't know who you sit next to. Look at somebody and tell them, you sit next to royalty. You sit next to royalty. He paid a price for you and I'm not going to dumb my value down because you don't know my word. Once the church understands who they really are then I promise you you can look at the devil and tell you better keep it pushing. I'm back in verse 20. For God bought you with a high price. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What, 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 what's the B clause of this? So you must honor God with your body. I, I'm trying to help somebody. Because you got to know who you are. No, no, no. You got to know who you are. No, no, sir. You got to know who you are. And you got to watch who you hang around that don't know who you are. Because if they don't know who you are, you'll start dumbing yourself down, daughter, baby. Like, maybe I ain't all that. The devil is a lie. I'm that and then some. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. 
Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.